All right, Sisters fans, hope everybody's doing well. And it's official. This has been, you know, our first full week without the show. And, well, you know, last night, what was it? I posted the meme of Calvin and Maurice on the couch. And it's like that moment of disappointment when you realize there isn't a new Sisters episode tonight. Um, a lot of people didn't know. I mean, they, they put out all the promos about it being the mid-season finale last week, but a lot of people are like, you know, I got my food ready, my margaritas, I was ready for a new episode, what the hell's going on? Um, and then you had a lot of people like, good, you know, I'm still trying to get the taste out of my mouth from that bad mid-season finale. And, uh, you know, as you, you may recall, I gave it a 2 out of 10, and this episode is my customary, and this is why the episode sucked. So, if you haven't watched my review, I mean, why haven't you? But then again, if you watched the live stream I did that night, then you pretty much know my thoughts on it. And I just wanted to highlight, and I'm not doing a full episode recap, but I'll gloss over details. I mean, again, that's what the review is for. This is pretty much me talking about why I felt the episode wasn't that good. And, yeah, it really wasn't good in the sense that it didn't feel like... Season 4 set the bar high. I don't care what anybody says. I know people say Season 4 is weak sauce. It's not as good as the other ones. Season 3 sucked, in my opinion. I'm not saying it didn't have its moments, but overall, as a season, it was not a good season of Sisters. Season 4, I think what really made it, for me personally, and I'll do a separate video about, you know, Season 4 so far, I think Season 4 gets extra points from me because Tyler Perry actually listened to fan critiques. And I'm not talking about those who drag the show and all. I mean, fans like myself who give constructive criticism because we know Tyler can do better. We've seen him do better. This is his number one show. And it should be given a bit more of a boost in quality. Ratings aside, there needs to be stronger scripts as well as, you know, uh, quality to the overall series. Some of the cast voiced their opinions and thoughts on where they wanted their characters to go. And during the Sisters After Show, I'll never forget it. It really felt like Tyler was like, hey, hey, hey you know, I'm the one who's doing this show. Don't It's number one for a reason. I got this. But it seemed like he was really improving upon things. You know, like <laughs> the jokes or the tweets about um Diary of a Mad Black Tweeter. People in the uh, salon, people at the bank. We got that. Story elements that seem to be directly from the cast members' mouths. Like, you know, oh, Sabrina with another love interest. Um, And and that was a big one for me. Everybody else is kind of the same in a way. But I do feel like overall, we're definitely seeing an increase in storytelling. It's not the best, but I'd say that aside from the mid-season finale, episode 10, and to an extent, episode 9... Uh, the first eight episodes of season four were pretty damn good, in my opinion. So, when I look at Fine Wine, the biggest thing for me, and I did that other video recently, Fatima was nothing more than clickbait. That's all it was. All the photos of her with the baseball bat going at Gary and Hayden, and then her cuddling with uh, Zach because, you know, obviously she's had one hell of a night. None of that was in the damn episode. I mean, I went back to edit the clip I did where it's like when Sisters meets Barbershop. You know, when Barbershop, when that girl pulls up, you know, across the street from the Barbershop uh, window where everybody can see and, you know, wrecks that car with the baseball bat thinking it's Malcolm Brown's car. Um, I didn't realize it because, you know, I remember people saw my, man, the last 30 seconds or whatnot. But when I uh, looked at the ep episode to get that clip, I'm like, damn. Fatima ain't pop up until the last possible minute. They really milked this entire episode for this one minute of Fatima. And yeah, I see why people were pissed off at it. So aside from the false advertising, you know, I already did the video about why ratings were low. And that's a shame. I mean, when even all the Fatima, you know, advertisements, the photos and whatnot still didn't bring in enough people to at least get a million subscribe uh be not subscribers that would be nice to hit <laughs> hey hit subscribe to help me get close to a million subscribers here on the channel but no um 
when not even a, a million live viewers uh, tuned in, that kind of says something. And I'm actually pretty fearful for the back half of the season. Now, I don't think the show's going to get canceled anytime soon. And a .94 is nothing to be ashamed of. But there was a noticeable dip from, you know, uh, only a couple of weeks prior. But I do feel like this uh, mid-season finale, it, despite the fact that the beginning of season four, the praise I gave it earlier in this video was about, you know, oh, wow, Tyler's really giving the fans and the cast what they want. Other characters, it, it's like if the Jacksons put out an album, you know, back during the Jackson, not even the Jackson 5, but let's say the Jacksons, or you can say Jackson 5, whichever one you prefer. Let's say, yeah, yeah, okay. So let's just say uh, the Jacksons fresh off their, uh, what was it, five number one singles in a row. Michael at the forefront, you know, my little MJ was the man and they decide, you know what, even though a lot of people didn't ask for it, we're going to put out another Jackson 5 album. But instead of Michael singing lead, it's going to be Marlon singing lead. No offense to Marlon, but people want to hear Michael. And it's like, nobody asked for this. <laughs> and then we're even going to put two bonus tracks on the vinyl. I don't even think they could do that. It was like, we're going to even throw in a separate, you know, vinyl where... Uh, Tito is going to be singing and it's like well we want MJ and but Michael Michael has the best part of the album he's going to be featured <laughs> on one song that's only 57 seconds long so you're telling me I got to survive like almost 20 tracks where the other brothers that nobody really cares about vocally are doing a majority of the singing and then the one person we want only gets less than a minute. That's that's exactly what it felt like going through this episode where it's like we're spending all this time with all these characters. Was it Mean Girls where it's like uh, Fetch, stop saying Fetch Megan, stop trying to make Fetch happen? That's what I feel like watching particular moments of the show. The Maurice and Q stuff, the Calvin and Sabrina nonsense, stop trying to make it happen. Because at this point, Maurice is a buffoon and an idiot. Just the way that he's being written. He is far more intelligent than what he's being portrayed to be now. Like I've said time and time again, because we is you know we gotta be politically correct and make sure you don't offend anybody. But you know, like I always say as a disclaimer, I'm not LGBTQ, but I have a number of LGBTQ subscribers, followers who message me like Hey, you know, Jeremy, I, I just got to say as a, um, you know, person from that community myself, I don't like how we're being represented because I don't feel like you have to be LGBTQ to notice that in a lot of Tyler Perry content, the gay characters are typically written to be overly thirsty and Maurice is no exception. But there's a difference between thirst and being straight up desperate because when you're thirsty, it's like, hey, what's that uh, quote I always see sometimes when I'm scrolling? Be careful. Uh, what you drink when you're thirsty because sometimes poison can look like water but being idiotically desperate Maurice if you're going to put Maurice at the I'm going to be I ain't going to look this might get some flack but I'd rather see more of Pam and her nosy ass than to have Maurice being written to be this moron that we know he's not see you cannot tell me that story makes sense because I've said it a, a bunch of times. When Q was first introduced, yeah, I agree with Sabrina. Should have called, you know, the cops on his ass to get him arrested for what he did to Calvin. But I'm like, oh, I see Tyler might be doing a little mentor mentee thing where Maurice may, and I say may find a love interest, but perhaps his story is going to focus more on kind of taking Q under his wing since he was in a similar position when he was younger. It's like Q was kind of representing the life Maurice could have lived if he didn't have, you know, kind, um, you know, pseudo parental figures to take him in once he was booted out of his family for being gay. Um, you know, he could have put Q on a straight, well, you know, pun intended, no, no pun intended there, on the path of the straight and narrow. And that would have been great. And if they did fall in love, that would have been cool. But 
to me, not every story, not every character in the show needs a love interest. Sometimes they just need a compelling story. And I feel like that could have been Maurice's journey. And I feel like instead you have this asinine story of being held at gunpoint and, you know, a bank robbery. I mean, I don't, the whole thing about, you know, Maurice could lose his job because he's frightened. He's fraternizing with the guy who's held the bank, you know, up and whatnot. I don't care about that. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that this guy literally threatened to kill you and your best friend, AKA Sabrina, the bank manager, all for a robbery. And yet you're still accepting his phone calls. You're inviting him into your apartment and whatnot. Calvin, it was stupid of Calvin to even, you know, um, present the idea of letting Q stay the night. But for Maurice to allow him to do so was just stupid. And then we spent, like, I know between the Calvin and Maurice scene on the couch and then when Q was invited in and he got undressed, that that felt like a good 10 minutes of the episode right there. All right, so I, don't, I need to move on to another scene or this just turned into a Maurice, Calvin, Q crap. But, you know, even with Calvin interrupting the date, thankfully Calvin wasn't at the date for as long as I thought he'd be. But at the same time, it's like, bro, so, uh, you need to chill. I mean, he's literally showing Sabrina who he truly is. This isn't about, you know, if he's bisexual or whatever. I'm talking about who he is as a person. And to be completely honest, kind of like Andy with Gary. Sabrina deserves better because this dude is showing to be controlling. Now, I'm not saying there haven't been times where Calvin has been justified in how he acts, but he is literally the kind of person I don't think I would want to date. You know, if I had a woman who was, you know, always causing a scene or, you know, basically embarrassing me as an introvert. Oh, Lord, no. It's just one of those things where I think that Sabrina even entertaining the idea of dating Calvin is just like, forced writing again i know tyler um wants to provide you know opportunities and jobs for people which i have nothing against but at some point you gotta rotate these characters around if you don't want to give up gary if you don't want to give up calvin for whatever reason put him in another project i know it might not be as big as sisters but i'd rather see someone showcase their talent even though I have not done the reviews, and I apologize to Kay Singleton because I said I would do the reviews for her show on All Black Covenant, but I have not done so yet. I saw uh, Anthony on Covenant, and yeah, the dude got acting chops. I've seen him in, uh, he was on Ambitions briefly on OWN. He got acting chops, but I feel like it's just a waste of his talent for what they do with him on Sisters. But, you know, if I were a character on the number one rated show, I would not complain, so whatever. But... When it comes to Andy and Gary, again, a lengthy scene that gave us nothing we haven't already seen or heard, even though I ain't gonna lie, sound, Gary, I mean, at one point, I'm like, damn, Gary, you kind of you kind of convincing me, but I'm like, nope, you fooled my ass earlier this season when I thought you were going to, uh, you know, help out Zach, but you got hidden agendas. I mean, the thing about it is, I think a lot of people tweeted this out too, because I saw these tweets um, that Wednesday night. Andy is trying to play mind games with a sociopath and she's going to lose. Basically, Gary called her ass out. It's like, oh, yeah, you just, you're just saying you want Robin to stay here to see how I'm going to react. And I'm not going to do anything. If you want him to stay, he could stay. All I'm saying is this. This is the him buying the penthouse in Rolls Royce is the level of stupidity of paying off somebody's student loans before you're married or whatever. It's just like, don't do it. It's like you're not even in a committed relationship or anything. So with Gary spending millions on Andy, who in her defense, she ain't asked for it. But at the same time, I'll be damned if I buy you a Whopper from Burger King and you tell me you're going to split it with this other guy. Hell no. This woman, you're going to eat the burger I bought you and you ain't sharing it with no other man. He can go buy his own sandwich. So why the hell? I mean, look, I'm sorry, but to spend three million, I, I know nobody asked him to do it, but to spend millions on something and then have a look, can we just agree to disagree in, or Andy and Gary like, do y'all want an open relationship or not? Just say it. I mean, I feel like that would 
that would just leave a lot of things, you know, uh, resolved right there as opposed to, well, Gary can go to the gym and screw around with whoever he wants to, but I'm supposed to just sit here in the lap of luxury. I mean, is it really that bad? I'm just saying, I don't know. But look, I know I'm still trying to get a house, so maybe I'm just speaking out of someone who's tired of living with his parents after nine months. But, I mean, if a woman told me, like, she'll be my sugar mama, but she'll put me up. No, 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 no. But then again, if it's in my name, okay, never mind, I'm thinking out loud too much. So, I feel like Andy, um, you know, I guess you could say trying to use Robin as a pawn in a game that he already knows he's in, but Andy keeps denying it. It's just one of those situations where we're seeing that season three ho Andy, and I don't like it. So, I mean, I don't know. So from there, um, Danny was in. I'm not really talking Danny because this uh, video is about why the midseason suck. The Karen stuff, people are like, where is your video on that? First of all, I will do the video. It's just that I need to kind of stretch things out because with Sisters Off for a good amount of time, I know the channel is probably going to take a hit in terms of views and ad revenue. Even though I'm going to start doing videos on other shows, none bring it to the table like Sisters. Unless it's a theory video about House of Pain, but that's neither here nor there. But um, the Karen stuff, I... I'm just sitting here scratching my head like, I don't know what's more ridiculous. The fact that Maurice is entertaining a guy who tried to rob him blind and threaten him with a gun to his face versus a woman who um, is completely indecisive and jealous and vindictive. At least with Karen, you can somewhat blame, well, if she's pregnant, it's her hormones. With Maurice, it's just stupidity. Zach and Jake... Like I said in my review, their scene didn't even need to be chopped up. They could have just had that one scene together at once, and that could have been it. I like it. Uh, I have read some comments, and I was like, they better not be doing like a Jake and Zach being gay thing. And um, Is it? Anthony Mack said the same thing uh, during the airing of Falcon and the Winter Soldier about Sam and Bucky. It's possible for guys to have a bromance and not be gay. You know that, right? Case in point, Sean and Corey from uh, um, Boy Meets World. I ain't gonna lie. After rewatching that series, it's kind of like there were some questionable moments where it's like, eh, but no, they're just boys. But um, yeah. So Jake and Zach. I know there are certain dialogue cues, like Jay saying, "You know, I really like you, Zach," and whatnot. It's like, well, do men really say that? Um. As a person who went to Liberty University, you know how freaked out it was when, you know, guys would hug each other, but it's like not even, you know, as the quote would say, no homo. It's just like, hey, you know, some people are more touchy feeling than others. It's like, obviously, you know, respect my personal space, but I'm not the kind of guy that says, you know, yo, man, I like you. It's more like, yo, you cool with me, that kind of stuff. Everybody has different jargon and whatnot. But at the same time, I don't think that's what Tyler Perry is going for. That's just my opinion. I, I, In a way, I kind of see what people are saying. But then again, that's like me looking at things from a 2022 perspective of, yeah, you know, in this day and age, it's not uncommon for certain cues to hint at two characters being romantically linked. I don't think I know of any people who ship Jake and Zach. It's just that Tyler Perry is kind of establishing their friendship quickly. That's just my opinion. And that's really all I got to say about it. It is what it is. Um, honestly, when I'm looking at my notes, I'm like, shit. This episode really didn't do much. Because, like I said, the Fatima stuff was at the tail end of it. So, I feel like, for me, this episode suffered from poor utilization of time, false advertising, and regressing the characters. And you all know how much I'm a stickler of regressing the characters. Was this the worst episode of Sisters? No. That award belongs to that one episode in Season 3, which I gave a 0 out of 10. I forgot what episode it was, but I don't remember it pissed me the fuck off because it was so bad. But, um, yeah. I just feel like the fans deserve better in regards to giving us an... I know not every episode is a 10 out of 10. Not every episode is even a 7 out of 10. But before going on an extremely lengthy hiatus, I feel like we could have got... We should have cut off at episode 10. Hell, I don't even think I gave that episode a 2. I forgot what I gave it. I think it was maybe a 4, but this episode won't it. And the fact that it leaves people pissed off about Karen, um, 
and whatnot, I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, okay, am I going to tune in? I even got some people in the comments like, yo, I ain't even trying to talk about, I ain't trying to even think about sisters until June 29th, or at least until we get a promo for the back half of season four. But as always, hey, I thought the cast brought their A game. Um, for the most part, I don't think there was like any weak performances in the episode. It's just that some of the material was not that good, but that's just my two cents. So, it's like they say, you got to take the good with the bad, or in this case, you know, the bad with the very little good. But, um, this episode, it wasn't that great, and I do hope the back half of the season. I just pray that the back half of this season goes well, because I remember season three, unlock it. Overall, solid episode. You have one of the best Karen and Zack scenes of all time in the series. But then what did Tyler do in the back half? Karen started acting bitchy. And that was the end of everything. I'm like, nope, 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 here we go. And she's been acting the same way ever since. And with her still chasing after Zach, I don't think that's going to end anytime soon. They're currently filming season five. Hopefully things get resolved by the end of the season of, of course, season four. But only time will tell. So, folks... Uh, what did you think about the mid-season finale, even though I honestly feel like everybody's in agreement that this episode was not that good at all? Um, I was kind of disappointed we didn't even get like an official return date. I mean, we did on various outlets, social media, TV line, but they could have given like a little teaser or something like Sisters will return June 29th. It's like... You overly exposed Fatima and advertisements and photos that didn't even make it into the midseason finale. I feel like it could have done good for the rating or well, for the fans in general to put a little tagline at the end of the midseason finale to let people know sisters will return on June 29th. Or that could have just been a stunt. So last night during the new family fun night, people would have tuned in for House of Pain thinking it was sisters, which is effective misdirection. And as somebody who was a communication advertising major, yeah, that's actually pretty effective. Deceitful, but effective. So thanks so much for tuning in. Take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you liked the video. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit subscribe and hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel.